Everyone shares their wins, but almost no one shares their losses. Don't get me wrong, I've shared many of my successes and I'm grateful for each one. But just like you, I go through many ups and downs in both my business and personal life. The purpose of this channel was never to showcase this perfect person that has everything figured out because that's not reality. My goal since the beginning was to share my journey with as much transparency as possible, documenting not only the highs, but also the lowest points. And so today I'm opening up about one of my biggest failures, building an e-commerce brand from zero to $1.7 million in the first year down to zero. And so I'll share what I learned from the experience, some of the mistakes I made. Uh, so hopefully you can avoid doing the same. And I'll be real, this is tough to talk about, but it's the truth and um, it's part of the journey. Uh, this video isn't just about what went wrong, it's about how we got started, some of the lessons learned, um, the hard truths about business and the realities that many shy away from discussing. So with that said, let's get into it. Okay, so here we are inside of the Google Analytics account for Modern Garden. That was the name of the brand. Uh, I no longer have the Shopify store active and so I'm not able to show the uh, actual numbers or the data from inside of Shopify, but I do still have access to the Google Analytics account. So um, you guys can see that prior to March 2020, there was no history before that. And then if you look at uh, June, uh, early July, after that, there's no history either. And so during this time period, we did, again, just shy of $1.7 million in sales. So my business partners and I started the brand March of 2020. We honestly thought that we had struck gold. During this time period, we had came across an article that had went over how there was a spike in interest being shown in home decor products, but even more specifically in indoor plants. And so we had seen other categories and other brands that had been able to go into existing markets with existing demand and have been able to actually do well and capture a piece of that market by simply innovating the buying experience, becoming a new brand in the space that just looks a lot more modern um, compared to like some of the previous brands in the space. And so for us, you know, again, we really thought that we had struck gold and we honestly decided to give it a shot, right? And dive right in. Um, it was a, also a rising trend and we had had past successes with taking advantage of trends. And so, you know, we got to work right away. We started uh, finding local suppliers, uh, ordering samples, creating content for the products, creating our website, and then we finally got to uh, start and testing our ads. And so very quickly, you know, we started testing ads without even having inventory uh, because we wanted to see what kind of response we would get. We wanted to validate our idea. And, um, you know, very quickly we started generating sales. Our first month in, we did $20,000 in sales. Next month, $100,000. The month after, $200,000. So, you know, we had seen that there was obviously clear demand for the products we were offering. and so. You know, we went all in. We really thought that this was going to be like a big brand that we built and actually had an exit on. We decided to continue like overseeing like any possible issues that could come down the road. And so, you know, as we started to scale, initially we started off having all the inventory right in our apartment, right? And it got crazy having hundreds of plants in our apartment. And so we then had to get a warehouse. We actually had to go and upgrade two to three different warehouses because of how fast we were growing. And that's when we really started to run into some of the issues with this particular category and market. And so um, the scaling challenges became a lot more evident. Um, working with our suppliers and our growers meant dealing with unpredictable factors like weather conditions. We would sometimes call our suppliers and they would tell us, hey, you know, there was a storm. Um, this inventory that you had already paid for and you were already going to pick up uh, is no longer available. Um, we would have issues when we would ship out plants direct to you know people's houses during transit. Some of the pots would break, some of the plants would break. Uh, we would deal with all of these uh, issues um, pretty consistently, even more once we started to scale. You know, every time we solved one problem, two more would pop up, pushing us right back to the drawing board. You know, fast forward, um, we continued to run the business. Uh, we were able to grow the business to um, consistently doing anywhere from two to three hundred thousand dollars per month. And that's really where we plateaued. In order to grow past that while avoiding some of the same problems that we kept running into, we were gonna have to do two things. First was investing into custom made boxes for all the different plant sizes that we had to help us avoid the issues of plants and pods breaking during transit because that was a huge part of the issues that we kept having on a day-to-day -day basis. The second was we were gonna have to acquire our own piece of land to be able to take full control over um, all the plants that we could grow 
and be able to uh, use. And so during that time period, that's when we had to make the decision of either continuing to run the business at current scale or close it down and consider starting another brand. And so being in the space since 2017 and understanding opportunity costs, we made the hard decision to close down the brand because we knew that we could start another brand and scale it a lot further without the complexities that came with the current brand. And so this brand ended up failing because we decided to close it down and actually move on to another venture. Throughout that whole process, obviously I gave you guys the condensed kind of version, right? Because I wanted to try to pack in as much as I could into this video. I may have to do you know, additional videos kind of going over some more specifics, but throughout that process, those are some of the main highlights. And even going through that process, there are a few lessons that um, really were invaluable for me. And I'd like to also kind of highlight those for you guys. So, you know, the first one was handling perishable products. If you ever decide to sell either perishable or consumable products, you want to understand uh, the complexities that could arise at scale right? Including the shelf life of the products, any, if there's any products or even like shipping the products, because for us, this could have been avoided if we would have simply asked our suppliers, if any of their vendors are having any problems at scale, we could have prepared for some of these problems that current vendors are already having from the very beginning. But because we didn't do that, you know, we had to learn the hard way. Next is scope of opportunity. Before deciding on a product, you want to look for product market fit and also if possible, current trends. If it wasn't for the backend complexities for the brand, we would have been able to scale this brand massively and even been running the brand up to date. And this would have been off the backbone of taking advantage of a, the right opportunity at the right time and also a trend, right? Um, that's been a huge part, you know, success up to date is really capitalizing on trends. And so even though this brand, you know, wasn't a success, um, it still kind of shows like how quickly you know, things can really grow and scale if you do capitalize uh, at the right trend at the right time. So uh, the last kind of key uh, learning lesson that I kind of took away and I wanted to kind of showcase to you guys as well is that you don't need a large budget to start. You can start off lean. We got started with a few thousand dollars. Again, we were very lean. We took our own product photos. We recorded our own videos. We created our own website. We launched our own ads. And so, you know, we started off lean, started making sales, took those profits, reinvested it. And that's how we were able to quickly grow, you know, 4X in the first month and then double the next month after. And so, you know, again, if, if we can do it, obviously, you know, you guys can can definitely start off the same way as well. Uh, also, you know, while avoiding some of the mistakes that, uh, that, that we made. So overall, I don't regret investing my time and effort into, you know, building a brand to seven figures only to shut it down. Like I said, the learning lessons were invaluable and what I've actually learned from that brand and every and all my other experience in e-commerce since I got started um, has actually helped me launch a new brand. And with this new brand, I've actually been able to grow it a lot larger and faster than all of the prior brands up to date. Stay tuned for the next video. I'm going to be sharing more about the brand, sharing more about that journey as well. If you got any value from this video, go ahead and drop a like, make sure to subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next video.